Da, 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 da. Attempt number three! <laughs> We're having a little problem with our sister wife rewatch. And in this particular case, um, we just can't. We're just dumb. idiots. There you go. Um, so this is our this is our sister's wife rewatch, which I just now realized in one of the past two takes that it's actually John's first watch for some of these episodes. My worst watch. <laughs> because I have seen the show, and especially the early, the first six seasons used to be my comfort show before I turned this into a job, because I started recapping on season seven. And, but before that, it used to be, I remember sitting there and doing my little work with it, it like binging on Netflix. So I've seen this all, and I just realized, John. How do we want to screw it up this time? <laughs> John did not watch it, so no. but I tried to ask him, like, do you remember not seeing any of these shows, or do you remember any of the shows that were for the first time? Do I remember something that might not have happened? Do you, when we did the rewatch, were there any episodes where you thought to yourself, I have never seen these people in my life, and you have no memory of, of any of it? You're like, I could have not seen any of these people ever. As soon ever. as we're done with this, I block it from my memory forever. Okay, so the theme of the episode was Season 6, Episode 14, Polygamous Flash Mob, which is kind of an odd description because it's actually about Aspen and Leon's graduation But it's from actually high school. about Cody. It's actually about Cody. It really is. It's a majority of this is about the parents navigating... How they're going to embarrass their children. Yes, this particular graduation so it's about the graduation itself and then a lot about the party so to start off the episode we get uh christine mary and the two graduates who are discussing the block party they're going to have and there's this accusation it was said by leon that mary is the only one who graduated immediately we go that can't be accurate because it's not because we go there's a picture they show later in the episode of Christine's, Christine's graduation. Graduation. Robin, yeah, so it was very odd because immediately we were like, wait, they all went to, uh, they all had some degree of college, <clears throat> as so far as I know. They meant. So I was really confused because I was like, well, maybe they got their GED, maybe they graduated from a homeschool thing. But then, not even like five minutes later, they just, the, the wives discussed their graduation, and Christine says, shows a picture of Christine in a cap and gown graduating it says after my graduation I just went home and hung out with no one because I was a weirdo in high school and, and had and a loner and had no friends but my cousins and they went out partying afterwards but I didn't and then Robin says totally not because she was hated by everyone because everyone it, hates one her one friend showed up at her party and it was her best friend and it was the only one who knew she was a polygamist but she wasn't really a polygamist it's just his dad her, her dad had a side family yeah, so... They didn't live together and or we didn't hear, act like polygamists. We didn't hear anything from Janelle, which makes sense because Janelle didn't have a child graduate at that time. But it was I still don't know what that comment meant. My guess is that... Who knows? Maybe that Mary was the only one who had a party? I don't really understand it. Uh, anyway, so they go on. Uh, Janelle's like, I don't have to do anything, thank you. I'll show up. They're like, you're going to show up? She's like, yeah, I'll show up. But I'm not going to do anything else. Robin is very insistent... They should have a fortune teller slash palm reader. Until she doesn't like what they say, and then she is over it. Immediately. <laughs> well, Immediately. What was odd about it was, from a surface reading, I was just genuinely surprised. They have been very, very conservative in their dress, in their speech, all of that. In their they drinking, have, in their drugs. They, they've always presented it as they are the most... Protestant. I'm not making any, you're into tarot, whatever. It just surprised me from them. And it, it got mentioned specifically that Robin wants a fortune teller. Robin wants a fortune teller. I'd say four or five times. And every time I just, I just thought, man, I guess things are really different because growing up, I would have been seen as like, no, the church has, I grew up in the satanic panic of the 80s <laughs> and 90s. If you are not familiar with evangelical culture of that time, Everything was sacred. It's the devil. I mean, you fortune tellers. No, no, no. My Little Pony was out. <laughs> Rainbow Bright was out. The Smurfs were out. Agents of Satan. That was that was not every church did that, but I had I had books that I read that explained everything about how they were all it was all secret propaganda. So I just was surprised. That's all I'm going to say is that I was I was kind of surprised by it. There's some interesting results. Um, that, you know, a lot of it is so vague 
that it could fit anyone, but it's kind of funny because overlaid it was season 18. Well, Chloe's getting a fifth wife. Yeah, we're going to find out about that. Well, they didn't say a fifth wife. They said an extra, another wife. Uh, so they didn't, they didn't imply that he was going to keep all the originals. That oh. was never mentioned. It was never a fifth wife. It was another wife. But so we'll I mean, see. when he cleans house, maybe when, maybe if Robin leaves. So anyway, the, um, uh, what in the world did I write? Who knows? Okay. So then there is one part. It is about graduation, but Dr. Guido is back. We've met him before when he met with, I think it was McKelty in Aspen. Anyway, he was there in a previous episode. I, which John has no knowledge of because immediately as soon as this is done, he is like, Q-tip in there, couple swirls around, flick it it's away. It's gone. It is gone. You surprise this guy, you know how to put on pants in the morning because anything I'm not that is not... I'm wearing pants right now. It's gone from... Please stay seated. So, <laughs> this pains me to say... Cody does not make bad points about this. I, gosh, yeah. It, I mean, I, I hate the to one say time it. in all the years he's actually, like, right about something. He talks about not wanting his kids to graduate college with a huge amount of debt. And he says, you know, you're not really guaranteed a job when you graduate. <laughs> I mean, he was right about that. And I got to call a spade a spade. It pains me to say it. Well, even a broken clock's right twice a day. I mean. Which he, is most. Which is usually twice more than him in a day. You know what my um, my archery coach used to tell me when I hit a, an X, which is the best. Uh, even a blind squat squirrel finds a nut once in a while. I was like, hey, thanks, Lloyd. He went on to be the UK Olympic coach, and he's still he's still there. Killing Very, it. And he was also one of the US Olympic coaches, too, but he was their national coach over there. So, and he explains that med school is going to be 150 to 200,000. And I don't... I felt like his argument was, ah, so what's a few more hundred thousand? It's kind of what I thought he was saying, as opposed to that is going to be almost insurmountable, especially if you want to go into any, like if you're going to plastic surgery, might be fine if you're good. You can probably make that back. If you're wanting to work in areas, I don't know, where you help people more that are in need, might be a little harder to earn that back. I don't know. I am not a, I am not a doctor um, for many reasons. I mean, money. Because, like, you didn't go to med school, probably. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna make, reason. I was gonna make a joke about money in there, but I think the fact, the, the lack of brains is probably a bigger issue than any money issue would have been. I almost failed high school honors biology. Now, admittedly, they started, with, it uses a college textbook, and I didn't have a lot of biology background, so that might have been a little bit of a, of a struggle for me, but. I didn't fully understand what Dr. Guido was saying. I think what he was basically saying is let them take as many loans as they want because this is their future. Um, it's hard in hindsight to feel uh, that that was the best advice, but, you know, whatever. So it looks like they walked away kind of saying, I mean, the thing is, is that at that point, Leon's an adult, I can get loans, going to be what it's going to be. Okay. Although he, Dr. Guido did annoy me with one of my least favorite misquotes, which he said, ah, oh, money's the root of all evil, which, I mean, I guess it's the same, but it's not actually accurate to what, if you're quoting the Bible, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Let's, so, let's be right. So, you know, and I'd expect a man like, like wrong. I'd expect a man like Dr. Guido to, to, to know that. Well, he's anyway. not a doctor of theology. We don't know. I don't think he's an MD. He's a he's a te they describe him as a teacher from the high school. Mm. So, so maybe he's not a doctor. Well, I'm guessing he's a PhD rather than an MD. So um, Christine talks about how much she's gonna miss Aspen, how valuable it is. We get one little clip of McKelty being kind of an insufferable teenager, which teenagers are. So I want to clarify, it was really annoying, but that's what you'd expect from someone her age. So. Uh, where she was like, I have better things to do than clean the house. And I was like, ah, oh, fair. Um, but it was kind of the way she said it. So, and so then we get to the graduation and it's kind of a hot mess. And my biggest annoyance about Cody this. doesn't even know where to put his car. Is that true? That's what he said. What does he mean? What does that I mean? I don't even know what to do with my car. That's what he said when he got there. When he was out of his car. So he did something with it. That is so bizarre. I don't know how I missed that. 
my That's issue why I did not miss it. My issue with this is nobody seems to have an issue with what is happening except him. And he takes it as an opportunity to say that Mary is playing games. So what happens is they're se seated, like the stage is running this way and they're seated here. So the, the, the graduates are facing this way. The stage is facing this way. They're facing this way. And the graduates would walk across toward them. To me, it looks fine. Mary is very upset because Mary's not sure that she's going to be able to see the graduates and the graduation and wants to move. And she's very upset. Well, it's not like it's like one of her kids. Oh, what? wait, it is her kid. The only one. The only kid she has. And everybody else seemed to be very understanding. They're going, they're looking for other places they can move to. And Cody's just like, I don't care. I have 20 other, 23 other people to think about. And my thought is, yeah, but this wife only does have the one. And for as much kind of crap as we've given about maybe an unfair budget or this or that, I'm with Mary on this, and it's the one thing. You were sort of like, she's overreacting, which is fair, because she is really hysterical. You can see the graduates. is near. I cannot tell what the problem is. Just grab some friends in your family and go sit wherever the heck you want, and don't ask permission from Cody. Cody. Pants. But what bothered me was, was this. I think this is the only reason they included it, which is that Robin goes to Cody and says she's upset, She's, you know, whatever. And Cody's response is, well, she's getting, she's dragging you to this. She's just playing games. These are the games she plays. And I was like, hold up. I, I mean, you could say that she's overreacting. You can say that she's being too emotional, that she's being unrealistic. But I do not in any way, shape, or form think she was playing a game. I don't think she was doing, randomly moving them or whatever. Her and, her and Robin had gone to look for another spot to find out if this area that had enough space for them was available. If they were, they were going to call Christine. Christine was going to gather up the family. They were going to move. Seems like a perfectly fine plan. And as near as I can tell from Cody from all of these years, that's how he wanted it handled. You have sister wives, so you have allies. You have best friends who look out for you. That's what they told us for six seasons. So after one time of being right about one thing in a decade... He goes right back to being himself. Well, it's, oh, you mean because the loans thing. Yeah. Well, and so it just annoyed me because it's one of those things where it's like, don't tell me for six seasons about how great sister wives are because they support you. And then when it goes against you one time and you have to walk a little bit around the stadium, all of a sudden, oh, it was, but it's also this trend of like, at first... Robin would support Mary and it was okay. Well, now we're getting to this turning point where he's like, you shouldn't be doing that. And by the end of the series, Divide we get him... and divorce. Well, he starts screaming at her about how Mary walks all over you and she's always this and that. And it's just one of those things where you go, you know, I think it's the only reason they included it. Because then we see the graduates going, everything's fine, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if this is the same day or not, but Cody's laying on Mary's ugly couch that they only ever used for filming. It was that like, it looked like a pew at a church, but it was like, it was like semi curved and he's like pretending to lay on it like it's super comfortable, but it's not. It's also where Mary and Robin have every single conversation that between the two of them. And he's like, I should be able to rest. A man should be able to rest on a Saturday. And I just kind of feel like that always, that framing always bothers me. It's like, well, so women should just work 24-7 to take care of all everything. the kids and his every need, right? So then they, Mary comes over and says, hey, can we talk with Leon about this conversation about the baby? And I was like, the baby? The baby? The potential baby? I'm like, I thought that was, oh, I was going to say dead and buried, but that's, oh, not, that's not the greatest way to Not put the that. greatest framing. The topic of having another baby had been settled. Settled law, like this was done. To be fair, yeah, that topic had been put to death. I thought it was done, but um, apparently they have not told Leon this. And I was like, it's been months, because we're now in like May, June, somewhere like well, that. Well, maybe it's the first time he came over to the house since then. Very realistic. So they sit down, Mary explains everything through the lens of basically I chose not to. And I was like, hold up. That is not my memory of the conversation. Roll the footage. But they do that. Cody barely says two words the whole time. I don't know if he does that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he said a word. He just sat there on the bed. So like they get that all done. Now they meet up. They're going to do, the parents are going to do a flash mob. Minus Janelle. Janelle is like, I will be doing something else. 
And they're going to do a flash mob, um, which was a big deal at the time. I don't know if I consider it a flash mob. I guess you could because no one knows about it. But uh, Cody's complaining. They're practicing. They're, Cody's complaining the whole time. It's not... The, the choreographed dance number they're putting together is not masculine enough for him. And I was like, wow, you don't hear that phrase every day. I, I, and it does not surprise me, but it kind of feels like, and then maybe don't do a choreographed dance. It's just not manly enough. And Mary's like, well, instead of snapping like this, snap like a man, however that is. And I was like, I, Cody's obsession with being masculine combined with his need to be the center of attention all the time gives an odd sort of like, you got to pick one or the other. I would recommend, I mean, at least if he was trying to be the center of attention all the time, it would be more authentic to he his true personality. He has babies with women, but he wants approval from men. Yeah, I mean, just just simmer on down, buddy. So then we get to the actual party. Lots of kids, lots of parents, lots of interviews with parents being like, I don't know. I have never met a polygamist before, but boy, the Browns are really nice. And we're like, yeah, 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 we know the cue cards. Yeah, right. We've, we've done this before. We know what happens. Um, and then we get into a big, huge section of, um, and Robin's like, there's a, you know, there's a fortune teller. There's a fortune teller. Christine this whole time is being super supportive. It's, it's Robin's idea. You know, she just thought it'd be so fun and it's supposed to be a great idea and it'd be so fun. You know, once again, Christine being the worst of the sister wives. Uh, that's sarcastic, by the way. Um, so we get kind of a mix of different times. So I'll kind of run through it. Aspen needs to get rid of some friendships. Um, she needs to have a career and then she'll marry. Great. I don't know. How, I, I think that's kind of how that worked on. Leon, there's a whole big bit about she's going to meet a man like her father who's a jerk and bossy. Don't know how that played out. Don't know a lot about their partner, so I don't know if I don't well, know, I don't know. Pretty if, sure that didn't play out anything like that. Well, I don't know that jerk and bossy fits, even if everything else doesn't. So anyway, uh, Christine. Now this is when it gets a little bit spooky because you know it's all very very vague, so it can kind of fit anything. But when I was listening, I was like, oh my gosh, I can totally see how this fit with plays out. So this whole thing with Christine about how. You're not really, there's a situation you're not really meant to be in it. You need to make some changes, all of that. You know, this is a bad situation. And immediately Cody's like, oh yeah, that fits. She probably saw that because you're always acting like a victim. And now what they took it to mean was that they need to make a change. Now that they're settled in, they need to change, make a change. And of course, my first thought is you need to ditch the man and go find a new dude and start over fresh and be an inspiration that way. Um, and we joked about that for a second, which was even funnier when Mary's kind of thing was, you've chosen this lifestyle and you'll be an inspiration to the rest of the family. That is something, that was something like, they'll make a major change because of you. Yeah. And my thought was- They will leave. My thought was- Because they don't want to be you. How both Janelle and Christine said they saw what Cody did to, to Mary and they were, they were not going to let it happen to their own lives. That is a very stretched telling, but I'll tell you what I thought it was. And there was something about health. Some of the kids have health issues, um, which made me think of... Um, Aspen, was it? Isabel. Whatever. Isabel. And then, of course, Truly coming up. Because mm. we're getting the preview for Truly's thing, which is just going to break my heart to watch again. I, it's going to be easier because you know that she is okay. lives and turns into an incredibly sassy teenager. Uh, with a great sense of style, but it's still going to be really hard to watch. And then Janelle, there was she was like, did you have a fight or some conflict with someone else? And Janelle's like, mm, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And it kind of was implied that she was talking about Mary. And of course, later on, we found out seasons later, they've had conflict for decades and decades that never really got resolved and neither one of them really want to resolve. Um... I mean, I think they wanted it to be over, but I don't know that either one of them really wanted to have a big change. I think each of them kind of wanted, I think Mary kind of wanted Janelle to be over it, and Janelle just was like, maybe it's just not worth it. That's kind of my impression. So that was really funny. And then there was a big section on Robin that was like, you shouldn't worry about money. You know that when you worry about money, it impedes the flow of money. And I thought... And then literally out of Robin's mouth said, she says, I've always paid all my bills. And I had money tucked away to save me. And I was like, 
We saw what happened. Which is why she had zero problems getting the house and didn't have to pay off anything that she didn't pay earlier. Yeah, she had no, uh, what do you call it when they... Debt. Collections or any of that. Because she always paid all her bills. Well, then there was... And a... never lies. Well, and then the other weird thing about it was I was like, hold up. There's a big difference between worrying about money all the time and... Spending it like you got it. Staying within your budget. Like, I wouldn't say that... I, well, okay, that's a lie. I do worry about money all the time. <laughs> you worry about everything all I the do, time. I do worry about money all the time. But I don't consider my worry is separate from my things like, how much money do we have? Should... How do we... We have a necessary repair coming up. How do we budget around it? Like, I think we're somewhat good with that. So, and um, after that, we get Cody, and that's when they say you're going to have another wife. And then Robin was like, we're done. I'm done with the fortune teller. Kick out My Mystic Mona. I mean, she doesn't literally do that, but she told us, she's like, and then as soon as he said that, I'm done. So it is kind of funny because a lot of the rest of these, I mean, Robin hasn't had a problem with money because she's been spending everybody else's. Not a problem for her. Yeah. You know, she's got a big, lovely house. She's got something like half of the property because her... Cody's name is on everything, and everything that's legally his is legally hers as well. Like, she's pretty well set, so we'll see. Um, at some point in all this, they do kind of a cutaway to where Janelle gives the girls a gift, kind of distracts them. Everybody else, Cody, Robin, uh, Mary, Christine, come out and kind of do a flash dance. Um, it wasn't just a flash dance. They were all dressed up. To me, it was a little bit like... Look at me! It, it, yeah, it was a little bit like, I don't know what the kids are getting out of this, but, you know, whatever. And then Cody ends it by saying, yeah, I think all the teenagers were like, yeah, that's a cool family. And I'm like, well, if teenagers are known for anything, it's for thinking adults, especially parents, are cool. I was like, I think, I think he just should have stuck with like, yeah, they probably didn't think it was cool, but I want, I want my kids to look back and if... If what they look back on is laughing at how stupid we were, that's fine. Um, but he's like, no, they definitely thought we were cool. And I'm like, okay, that is that is definitely how it happened. And that was kind of it. That was the whole episode. It was kind of hard to focus at the end because they had the sneak peek of truly getting sick because all the moms go away and Cody... Forgets to give her anything to drink. Or something. I don't I don't remember all the details. I guess we'll know next well, week. We'll find out next week. So okay if I see something, you might want to cut out like. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to have to edit anything out. So thank you for joining us and we will see you later. Bye.